uh josh first of all uh would you be okay you know if we start like you know with a few questions about the first one and then move on to the second one totally absolutely all right wonderful so are you ready or do you need some popcorn first or uh, i'm good let's dive in all right great <laughs> so because uh in the first one it was like you know about fulfilling expectations when it comes down to your character you know the, the expectations his mother had of him um and and they were not necessarily his own expectations when it comes down to what he does in life. And I was wondering, because sometimes it feels so, it seems to be so easy to uh, follow, uh, you know, to chase the goals that others have for you. So I was wondering, when you started off, um, how did you make sure that the only expectations you try to fulfill are your own? Boy, that's a great question. Um... I, I think that's a challenge. Boy, that's a great question. You never want to, I'm a personally a people pleaser. So, right. <laughs> so that's for me, because I, there's so many people um, that, you, you know, you want to do right by and you want to make sure they're enjoying it and liking it. And, and, um, and, and I loved having, you know, Lauren was really at the helm of this thing with, with writing it, my wife. And, um, and, and so, I think you just gotta, you gotta care. You gotta care a lot. And, and, and when you, when you care in the right ways, then, then I think, then it, I think it serves the project. Um, and so I, I just, I cared about the story. Lauren, and I put so much work and effort into it that, that we wanted it. We wanted the characters to be identifiable and, and we wanted just people to see little bits of themselves in them. And, 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 and so you, you kind of have to throw caution to the wind on, I'm not going to please everyone. There's no way to, it doesn't work that way, you know? And, and you don't have and, to. What's that? And you don't have to please everyone. And you don't have to. And that's, yeah, that's the important part is, is uh, once, once you realize it's not possible, you gotta, you gotta let it go. And, and, and so we just, we tried to, we tried to care about the characters and the story and the message that we wanted to get across and and it was it was so exciting for us um how it was received because we didn't know i mean it was it was a a really in our minds it was this little story that we thought we'd get out there and just see what happens and that it did so well on netflix just absolutely blew our minds but that's so great because you know i feel like that uh, it's so cool that it shows that people are really you know that, that there's hunger for movies like this because i feel like you know uh, we've seen like, you know, smaller heartfelt movies, you know, like 15, 20 years ago, but the movies, you know, that we see on the big screen have become, you know, bigger and bigger. So it's really hard to find these movies when you go to the movies. So, and these streaming services actually really allow you to discover smaller, nice stories that can reach, you know, a huge audience as well. I'm, I'm a huge fan of them. And, and it could be that I recently have a, had a daughter and so i've entered parenthood and and now and you know, i love the television you know game of thrones and westworld there's there's so many great shows but yeah. there's a lot they're becoming fewer and fewer that are child friendly <laughs> and right. and and so i kind of i'm a i'm a sucker for a you know a fun feel good movie that that everybody can watch and oh, yeah. uh so so yeah i i I agree with you. I think streamers have have opened that up beautifully to um, and realizing that the audience, you know, it could be that we're living in such a crazy world right now where turning on a movie where you kind of know how the, the end might might go, you know, you might, yeah. they might run the sunset together, you know, um, I think people enjoy that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in the first movie, I was like, oh, I feel so sorry because uh yeah your character's mother was like you know proof that you're capable of doing anything you know when she told him to go to the place uh, and i was wondering if you do remember you know like a specific moment from your career where you kind of you know where you desperately felt the need to kind of prove yourself and your skills oh for sure i i, I think all actors have to deal with that <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're going into such an odd industry that that, you know, especially if you don't grow up in the industry um, and I grew up in the Midwest, um, it's not a common thing, you know. Uh, and so so for me, I mean, I'm sure you could ask my shrink what uh, or my my psychologist, probably what <laughs> the true 
true answer, but, uh, but yeah, for, for me, there was, I, I, my family, the people close to me, the people most important were very supportive. And, and that was, that was huge for me. But of course I, everyone has random people in their lives that'll say something like, Oh, you're not going to do that. Or, Oh, are you still trying to pursue that acting thing? You know? And, and, and oh, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so for sure there were, there were moments that, and maybe not in a bad way, I was driven by the doubters or the naysayers. And, and, uh, and, and I think, but I think that that shapes all of us maybe differently, but uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's certainly us in an industry where 99% of your, your answers are no, you know? <laughs> right. But it's that there are so many people that are always trying to talk you out of something. So that will, that's probably, that, that's how yeah. it's been and, and will be. I guess I, so important to have your have your compass. You know what is what is true for you. What do you what do you want out of life, and how how do you want to get there? And 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 everyone's going to be saying different things in your head on both sides. And so I, I think it's important to st stay true to to who you are, who you want to be, and and you know the values that come along with that, and and to keep those in your life daily. Right. And speaking of who you are, um, in, in, in the first one, your character also says that he had no idea who he was before he met uh, Kelly. And I was wondering, uh, did you know who you were before you met Lauren? Mm. Yes, um, I've changed since since we've been married, for sure. Um, I like to think for the better. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I live in the camp of uh, I don't really subscribe to the you complete me aspect of marriage. I yeah. like the idea of a complete person and a complete person meet each other and choose to do life together. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think if, if, if uh, it can get a little slippery, if you, if you need someone for your own happiness, you know, if, if you have to depend on someone. So I, I like to think I knew who I was or the version of that person, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> But I've certainly enjoyed my life so much since since Lauren came into my life. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what about because uh, in the first one, Kelly was not really impressed when it comes down to allow people to well uh, to put it in the word in her words to save her in a way. Um, she was always trying to solve the problems on her own. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering if you agree on the fact that sometimes even if if if, if it's hard and if you are proud and stuff uh that sometimes you just have to allow yourself to to let other people help you yeah i agree with that i i think it's everyone's personality is different but i think it's it's a cool a thing when when someone's down and out to sit to to say hey i need i need help and to, to allow that in and and i think it's easier for some people to allow it in than others um <laughs> but uh but, and, and that's an interesting thing that you bring up because I think you'll see, come to the second one, um, a shift in Callie's character of, of she, at the beginning, she might not be as, as hard-nosed as she was in the first movie of, of this is my life and no, I don't need anybody. And, and uh, so that's kind of a fun development for her character. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for help. I certainly have done it too many times to count. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, but that's so cool what's up when it comes down to the sequel, because um, it's, of course, in the first one, she was in her world and she, she, she understood everything. She was in her, in her environment. So and now she's in this place that she doesn't know because she hasn't really seen that much of, of life because she was uh, working so much on the ranch and uh, in the bar and stuff. So right now she's like, uh, she's like overwhelmed by, by everything in a way. <laughs> And yep. with that. Yep. I think it's a really fun, you know, my eyes were opened in the first one and her eyes are open <laughs> in the second one. And it makes it, you know, it makes, because of that, it makes so much sense that there is a sequel because, because now you're like, oh, first we got to, to, to know her, her world. And now we get to see his world. And we have to figure out if, if both worlds can uh, exist together as a new world in a way. So you are on to something, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
Um, of course, I, I I wasn't allowed to see the movie yet. Uh, so mm. just just in case you're wondering why is this guy talking about stuff he doesn't know? Uh, <laughs> oh, not at all. <laughs> right. Uh, but but uh, of course I've seen what what's available, which is uh, the trailer, and there are already you know like beautiful and uh, and important lines in there. Uh, you know, like like um, for example, um, that that uh, relationships are are all about uh, compromise in a, in a way, um, and uh, because a lot of people are not willing to compromise what they already have, you know, it's very easy to stay in your comfort zone. And some people are like, "Do I really want to have this new chapter? Do I want to open that?" You know, um, but. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, but it feels like that the movie is showing that it's super important to allow yourself to have a change in your life in order to move on in a way. Yeah. Are dead on. When when this movie kind of came about and Lauren was the beginning of the writing that we, we were talking about the theme of the movie, you know, you kind of at the beginning, you kind of want to have that the idea of that and you hit the nail on the head. It was. <laughs> Um, change is inevitable. We're, we're all, I mean, 2019, 2020, we really hit some change, you know, um, change yeah. is inevitable and it can be hard and it can be beautiful and it can be what you make of it, but you know, it's going to happen. And, uh, and so I think, I think that's exactly what it's, it's, it's exactly what you said that um, it's, it's not always going to stay the same, whether it's, a guy and a girl on a ranch in their perfect little world, you know, that uh, there yeah. get thrown in marriage and life in real world or in movies, uh, a wrench is going to get thrown. And, and when it does, how do we react? And, um, and, and yeah, that's, that's kind of right where the movie sits. And, and I believe you started off as, as an uh, accountant, right? Before you started modeling and acting, you studied for two years, I believe. Sort of, yeah. I was studying it um, far, far from being an actual accountant, but uh, I was I was studying accounting and uh, and uh, actually a little bit of Mandarin as well. Those are my that was my focus in in college, and I made it two years and and realized <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> so would you say that's been like yeah, like so far when it comes down to your career, that's been like your biggest change so far that you felt like was necessary to do? My biggest change, ooh, that's a great question. Um, I grew up in, in kind of the music world. My parents were both um, music and composition and performance majors. So I kind of always had this part in my blood, but I think driving, driving my little Hyundai when I was 19 um, out to Los Angeles with, I don't know, five grand in my bank account or something. I think that was the biggest Ooh, moment of my life. <laughs> Just, <laughs> buddy, buddy. <laughs> right. And uh, and I'm very grateful for it. Looking back, it, I'm the when I look back on the the years of buying a foot long subway and cutting it and going, okay, there's breakfast, there's lunch, and there's you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I look back on when when I look back on those times, um, I only look back with a smile. I mean, it was it was so such a formidable time in my life and and the times where it was, it was really hard or a little bit of a struggle um I feel like it makes when you do a movie or you something something good happens it makes it so much sweeter um so yeah I I think I think that transition of moving to Los Angeles would probably be one of the biggest chapter shifts in my life right uh, and there's another line in the film uh, in the trailer that seems very very uh that I really like it's like uh, the best things aren't things at all, it's each other. And what, what do you think why a lot of people seem to forget about that? Because uh, a lot of people, you know, are chasing the next car, the next house. But then again, what's, what's worth a house if you're not able to fill it with life in a way? So um, what do you think why, why a lot of people seem to have, you know, the tendency to um, chase dreams and goals for the wrong reasons in a way? You know, I think if we could answer that question, <laughs> it'd be a, yeah, <laughs> the world would be a better place. No, it's a good, it's it's the same thing I think about with a lot of war and politics, or I'm like, mm -hmm. why is history keep repeating itself? You know, yes, um, yeah. it's uh 
I, I don't know. I, I don't know how deep we want to go or, or but uh, I think there's a thing in it's <sighs> I don't know. I think about it every day, though. That's that's one of my favorite topics, though, is is is, uh, you know, we we know that there's not there's not a lot of fulfillment in a lot of the earthly or worldly possessions. And and, you know, we know that there's science behind what a hug if you hold a hug for 10 or 20 seconds, what it does to you. And and and, you know, I don't think when the majority of people you know, especially if we're super well off, like when they're laying on their deathbed, we're not talking about the third car. We're talking about, you know, the, the people in our lives and how they make us feel. And, Absolutely. and, and so, yeah, I, uh, I wish I knew the answer to that. And the, for me, I think I, I do little things in the morning with my, my faith life and, 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 and Lauren and I are really transparent with each other. And we, we try to combat some of the some of that when it gets in the way and and you know we all fall we all fall victim to oh, it yeah. a little bit but uh yeah that's uh if you find the answer to that call me <laughs> <laughs> i definitely will i promise you <laughs> no uh and speaking of lauren because she uh wrote the scripts and uh and now that you are married with her i was wondering when it comes down to the writing process how you know is she someone that appreciates whenever you have an idea or is she like dude let me do my job and do it yours later. Are we talking before her morning coffee or after? <laughs> Whenever she starts writing. <laughs> she's no, she's she's very, very good. Sometimes she'll be in the zone. And if she's on something, I'm like, oh, what if? And she's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, and she'll finish what she's doing. But when when she's stuck, um, it, it, it when in the first one, I remember a little bit in the second one, too, I would if she got to a spot where she was just a little fried, I'd like come in and we would talk out the scene and then I would give dialogue options and then she'd like something or it would spark ideas for her to write something else. Um, and, and so I love, I love being a part of it, but she's, she's the real quarterback in it for sure. But you never told you stuff like, Ooh, that idea will never make it into the script. No. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. I'm well I think we've both told each other that at times of she'd write something like you can't write that and then I would say something <laughs> like you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah so there's also uh, the, the the big development that your character goes through uh between the first and the second one is like that he realizes uh what his passion is and what his kind of destiny is in a way um and was wondering how do you make sure that you you follow you 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 find that that real motivation that takes you to the place where you want to be you know when how do you how do you make sure you don't waste too much time doing something that isn't really what you want boy in real life yeah as an artist if you will <laughs> um Man, I, I feel like I'm in my therapy sessions. This is great. <laughs> um, I I think for me it is super helpful to to write out my day. <laughs> I think a lot of us we, we're like, oh, we don't have time in the day. But if we wrote out exactly what happened every single hour, you can find that there's there's a lot of time in a day. Um, but uh, but if we don't schedule it or we're not um, if we're not living life on purpose, I don't know a better way to say that. Um, it can, it can really easily slip into that Instagram or, um, you know, dead end projects. And, and, and so you, you just gotta, you gotta be picky and choosy. I think for Lauren and I, it's really hard to say no. Um, and, and so when some projects would come across a desk and, and you don't want to, you don't want to say no because it's another project and, and ah, yeah, you know, right. um, but when, when all of a sudden there's, your time there's your time only goes so far and now we have a daughter and and in my brain you kind of got if everybody has a hundred marbles and you put some in the I want to be a good husband and you put some and I want to be a good dad and well I, I have a, I'm on a general hospital show too and and oh but Cal you know all of a sudden your marbles start to spread and and so I, I think if you're very intentional with your time um, and every every couple weeks you kind of realign whether it's going on a run by yourself or a hike or waking up really early and journaling by yourself and just being like, is my life aligned with 
with what I believe. And, you know, and some of us say like, oh, this is so important to me. But if you show your your time and your bank account and da da da, it's it's not that, you know. And so I think a lot of us, including myself, we're very self deceiving. <laughs> uh, but I, I think if every couple of weeks we kind of check in, you know, center ourselves, um, it's easy. It it helps to combat that. But I can imagine, you know, as an actor, because a lot of people don't know what it really means to be an actor. You know, they they only see the movies and they go like, wow, it must be so cool. But they don't know how much time it already takes until you actually get to the first filming day and how long from then on how until you finish the project and until you can release it because then and how many hours a day you actually work on something yeah i mean it depends in uh how you're a part of the project and in what capacity but if um, the best job is the actor's job if you're solely an actor you show up on day one you leave on the last day of filming and then you do some press and you're good. Um, and and everyone else has the rest of the job then, right? Yeah, <laughs> every, in the crazy hours. Um, if, if you're producing on it, like Lauren and I are producing on this, there's right. finding locations and you're getting budgets right. And I mean, there's, there's so many things that go into the front, the during and the back end that, uh, that yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, but it's interesting because if you're not working, you've got no projects on your desk. You got to, got to fill your time but then the second you've got a couple things going you're 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 spread pretty thin pretty quick no because sometimes i'm like you know when i when i watch movies you know you 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 focus on dialogue and characters of course but there's so much stuff in the background that required so much thought you know like how does this guy's room look like does does oh. this room represent you know the character and stuff like that you know stuff that people don't really think about when they watch a film yeah, I mean, you you understand it. Like, if you see any of those like Marvel movies or those huge huge movies, and you look at the credits, and you just see hundreds, of people, <laughs> and you're doing movies like like our movies. It's not it's not that way. So there's a lot of people wearing a lot of hats. But there there have been times that Lauren will be in the edit, and I'll walk by the room, and they're pulling bird noises, and they're you know whose whose lines were picked got to do an ADR later and I mean every single scene every line color correcting it's it's all on purpose um and and yeah that was probably one of the more eye-opening things going into the industry I was like they don't just show up with a camera and call it a day and I mean there's there's so (laughs) so much stuff going on yeah Josh, seriously, that was it from my side. Seriously, thank you so much for your time. It was such a huge pleasure talking to you. Seriously, you're so, you're, you you seem such a cool guy, actually. <laughs> oh, so do you. No, seriously, I. it's fun doing interviews where, I mean, you, you stumped me like, there were so many questions. I was like, oh, that's a, I've never been asked that question. And that's my oh, dream. Oh, happy to hear uh, that. <laughs> so you're, you're great. And it's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh, wow. I really hope you like the second movie, too. 